European castles are amazing places to visit. The elegance, the history. But have you ever dreamed about staying in one? I think it's every girl's fantasy. Pack your bags, jump in a chopper, and say hello to the sweet life. I feel like I'm a princess. We're on the hunt for Uber atmosphere and ultra luxury in our Uber Guide countdown of Europe's most lavish castle hotels. London is the exciting gateway to our first destination. After you've seen the sights and tired of the hustle and bustle, it's time to flee the madding crowd for the quiet English countryside and number 10 on our list, Amberley Castle. As soon as you pull up the drive, you know it's a big castle. Amberley Castle is a 900-year-old castle in West Sussex, uh, sort of to the south of London, almost to the coast. It's probably the best preserved castle in Britain. Amberley is an imposing presence with massive stone walls topped by turrets. The battlements tower over Amberley's beautifully landscaped gardens where peacocks roam. Inside, this historic castle is a place where medieval atmosphere still reigns supreme. There are centuries-old suits of armor and ancient weapons of every description. All the furniture and the pictures and the walls, it's all in keeping with uh, you know, the ambience of the, uh, of the castle. Amberley is also known for its uh, oubliette, which comes from the word oublier, which means to forget. It's a dungeon, so they would put prisoners down there, throw down the trap door, and they were forgotten. Built in 1103 as a hunting lodge, Amberley Castle's legendary history includes many important figures. It's great because, you know, you're going back a thousand years of history from the Norman invasion. I mean, just imagining what was going on in that period, you just feel part of history. Just uh, wonderful. But Amberley's most storied visitor is the guest who just won't leave, Emily, Amberley's resident ghost. She was um, a servant girl who worked here in the 13th century and um, she had an affair with a bishop, she fell in love with him and he um, made her pregnant. She um, threw herself off the battlement and died. On dark and stormy nights, hotel guests may hear someone walking in the stairwells. Sometimes guests will return to their luxurious rooms to find cushions thrown haphazardly about. Even the beautiful garden appears to be vulnerable to this otherworldly presence. You know, when you're gardening, you usually can tell when somebody's sort of walking past and whatever, and there was nobody around at all, nobody in the gardens, and just felt like somebody was there watching me. And it's very hard to explain, but just like somebody is there with you. But the ghost just seems to add to the mystique of this award-winning castle hotel, considered one of the most romantic hideaways in Britain. In addition to its sumptuous restaurant and lounge areas, Amberley offers a host of outdoor amenities in a tranquil country setting with gardens, footpaths, and lakes. Amberley Castle has the history, the romance, and the modern touches to make a stay here a truly royal experience. And that makes Amberley Castle number 10 on our countdown. The Soviet bloc is long gone, but travelers are just beginning to enjoy the unique attractions of the Czech Republic. Venturing forth from Prague towards the Austrian and German borders, you can discover such out-of-the-way gems as Cheshki Krumlov, a charming medieval town designated by UNESCO as a world heritage city. The moment you get here, you will be amazed by the rich architecture, history of the place. It's really a great experience, a great visit to very old times 
Renaissance and Gothic period. Don't expect uh, a big town. It's really a small provincial town, but with a very, very special atmosphere. Hotel Ruse, our number nine pick, is ideally located in the heart of Chesky Krumlov. One of the better castle hotels in the Czech Republic is the Hotel Ruse, which is a Renaissance era castle that was a Jesuit monastery. It's just recently been refurbished and opened as a castle hotel. The hotel's sunny terrace looks out upon the Vitava River below, a popular spot with swimmers and boaters. Inside, the Hotel Ruse has retained many of its historic features, including antiques, frescoes, and tapestries. The hotel's 80 rooms and suites are decorated and furnished in a traditional Central European style. We can offer to our guests some very unique apartments when they can feel like if uh, they are living in a Renaissance period. Many of the rooms provide a magnificent view of Cheshke Krumlov, or the countryside. Downstairs, the Knight's Feast Hall offers an authentic 16th century ambiance. The hotel organizes theme events where the guests can dress up in medieval costumes. I love to stay here for weekends uh, when I can uh, see the guests uh, dressed in the dresses because the hotel is full of life. For international visitors, such as this group from Taiwan, it is truly an exotic experience. <laughs> The chefs of the Hotel Ruse prepare a variety of traditional Czech specialties and international dishes. Czech cuisine favors meat dishes, featuring pork and beef, as well as goose, duck, and wild game. While the Hotel Ruse may not offer the elegance and glamour of an English castle, this historic hotel provides a wealth of character and atmosphere in one of Central Europe's most charming medieval towns. Relax and enjoy this peaceful place. The Hotel Ruse, the Rose of Cheshke Krumlov. Coming up, a medieval gorge top castle in Spain, followed by a visit to the mythic Scottish Highlands and one of the finest castle hotels in the UK. Next on Uber Guide. Every summer, millions of sun seekers crowd Spain's beach resorts. But you'll discover the real Spain further inland in places like the province of Castilla-La Mancha. Here you'll find Parador de Alarcan, our number eight castle hotel pick. The approach to this Parador up this narrow winding road is just spectacular. It sits by itself out in the middle of nowhere and it just looks like a real castle. The Parador de Alarcón is, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful, best preserved castles in all of Spain that you can stay in. It's got every element of a castle lover's dream. It's got archways, it has a crenellated tower, it's got arrow slit windows. The castle is dramatically perched above the canyon of the Jucar River, which acts as a defensive barrier. In addition, three towers were built on neighboring hills and used as lookout points to protect the castle. Today, this gorge-top medieval castle is part of the Parador chain of hotels, first established by the Spanish government in 1928. This Parador has 14 rooms. This Parador has only 14 rooms, and the six most unique rooms are located in the main tower, with one room per floor. Each room is named for someone who has played an important part in the castle's history. There are many special rooms, including the room at the top level of the tower, 
which is acclaimed as the finest suite in all of the Paradors. This fortified castle is steeped in history and has seen many battles and revolts. Built in the 8th century by Moors, the castle was besieged by King Alfonso VIII in the 12th century during the Christian reconquest of Spain. Alarcon was captured in dramatic fashion. It was a Christian commander that took two daggers and he scaled the walls of the castle by putting these daggers into the cracks of the stone and he finally took the castle. The restored castle has an aura of simplicity and elegance. Rich fabrics and bold colors contrast with the stone walls. The public rooms combine a classic setting with modern decor. I suppose it's escape from, you know, work, family, children. You know, you just get away and it's just so peaceful. So, yes, it is a bit, you know, romantic, I suppose. In my past life, I think I was living in a castle. <laughs> Meals are served in the Great Hall with its 45-foot ceilings. Alarcon's specialties include morte relo, a warm pate blending different meats and other regional dishes, accompanied by a fine local red wine. Hotel guests can explore the medieval walled village of Alarcon, whose quiet streets and plazas are adorned with ancient churches and bell towers. But for many, the real attraction is the perfectly preserved fortress itself, where medieval architecture and modern amenities are artfully combined in one of Europe's best castle hotels. From Spain, we now travel to the Scottish Highlands, a beautiful region full of history, tradition, and myth. Uniquely located amongst the glens, lochs, and mountains of this remote area, our number seven pick is Inverlochy Castle. When you arrive at the castle, you go up a drive that's surrounded by beautiful, beautiful rhododendrons. Inverlochy Castle is built on the ruins of a uh, former castle that was built in the 13th century. But this castle was built in 1870 by Lord Abinger. You pass through the door and there's fine art on the walls, there's crystal chandeliers. Everybody walks around in sort of quiet tones of voice. It's very refined, very elegant. With its blue frescoed ceiling and crystal chandeliers, the impressive Great Hall evokes an era of grandeur, refinement, and old-fashioned sophistication. We are in a, in a setting here which is perhaps a little bit away from modern day life, and that's why the majority of the guests come to stay with us, because they do want the castle feeling, they do want to experience what it was like to perhaps have stayed in something like this in the years gone by. I just got here from the United States literally 10 minutes ago, and it's like stepping into an alternate universe. I mean, I feel like I'm a princess in a castle or something like that. Nestled in the foothills of the mighty Ben Nevis, Scotland's highest mountain, the castle is surrounded by some 500 acres of private gardens. Probably the most famous early guest was there was Queen Victoria, who wrote in the uh, guest book that she had never seen a lovelier place in all of Scotland. Queen Victoria visited Inverlochy in 1873, a century before the castle was transformed from a private country estate into a luxury five-star hotel. Today, an exclusive clientele seeks out the discreet charms of Inverlochy Castle Hotel. Princes, kings, queens, they've all been there. A lot of celebrities will stay there because they are protective of people's privacy. The one special thing about Inverlochy is there that we tend to keep this rather quiet. Celebrities do come and stay with us on a regular basis because they're not bothered here 
um, in, in any way whatsoever and we treat them as normal guests. Despite the manager's discretion, Rumor has it that Robert De Niro, Sean Connery, Elton John, and many others have savored the beauty of this Highlands retreat. There are only 17 bedrooms, each with a unique design and outlook. The original antiques, paintings, and drapes are all very much in keeping of the time this was a Victorian family home. The luxurious suites are spacious, with large picture windows that frame the manicured gardens and highland scenery. The area surrounding Inverlochy Castle is rich in stunning landscapes and places of special interest, such as nearby Loch Ness, home of the fabled monster that the locals firmly believe in. Of course we do. It's, uh, it's very important to, to believe in that. And, um, you know, sometimes when you do drive by and the, the weather is a bit misty, um, you sometimes actually do think that you've just seen Nessie, but uh, then the camera is not at hand. After a day walking on the grounds, tennis on the hotel courts, or boating on the lock, the fresh highland air will give you a thirst for the fine local spirits. Topping off the day with a game of billiards, played under watchful eyes, it's easy to believe that you've stepped back in time. Just a few days ago, I was eating top ramen and setting for my summer school exam. So this is just about as far away from that as can be. But I can tell you I'd much rather be here than there. <laughs> it was wonderfully beautiful, Queen Victoria wrote of Inverlochy Castle, and it's hard to disagree. The traditional charm, incomparable location, and impeccable service have all contributed to make Inverlochy Castle number seven on Uberguide's list of Europe's most lavish castle hotels. When we return, we're traveling to Germany's fabled Valley of the Rhine, then to an unforgettable castle on the west coast of Ireland. Next on Uberguide. Our search for Europe's best castle hotels has taken us to England's Amberley Castle and Hotel Ruse in the Czech Republic. We've traveled to Perador de Alacan in Spain and visited Inverlochy Castle in the Scottish Highlands. Now we're off to the romantic Rhine River, home to Germany's most famous wine-growing region. With their narrow walking streets and half-timbered houses, quaint towns like Rudesheim are popular destinations for both Germans and international visitors. The Rhine River has been used for carrying trade since Roman times. The Middle Rhine section, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, is home to more than 40 castles and fortresses from the Middle Ages. River traffic could be stopped and tolls collected at these locations. In some cases, they would have castles on opposite sides of the river with a chain pulled across them, and they would uh, stop the boats coming through to pay a toll. Towering above the town of Oberwesel stands the majestic Hotel Schönberg, number six on our list of castle hotels. Hotel Schönberg is one of the best preserved of all the Rhine castles that has been converted into a hotel. Schönberg is three fortresses that are interconnected by, by walkways. The hotel is wonderful to explore because there's lots of little passageways and little secret rooms off the passageways. An up-to-date hotel incorporated within an ancient structure the castle is a fairy tale picture of towers and battlements. I'm just a huge castle buff. I love the castles and I did a lot of research. I went on the internet and got a lot of travel books and this one just seemed like the, the neatest one that I could find. Schoenberg Castle has a long and storied history dating back to the year 911. The Dukes of Schoenberg ruled over Oberwessel and were one of the most famous Rhine families. The castle was burned down in 1689 by French soldiers and lay in ruins for over two centuries. 
It was restored in the early 20th century at great expense and later converted into a hotel by the Hudel family, who have filled Schoenberg with art and antiques. Today, there are 22 rooms and suites, each individually furnished to a high standard of luxury. The bedrooms feature canopy beds, fairy tale drapery, and elegant traditional furniture. As a hotel guest, you can step back in time as you trace the path of the ancient Dukes of Schoenberg. You look at these things and of course you think, all these people who lived here the last thousand years, it's, it's very, it's, it's strange, you know, to, to think who walked around here, who lived here, how did they live? You can ponder these questions on the terrace where lunch is served, accompanied by the local Riesling. In the distance, vineyards cling to the steep valley walls of the Rhine Gorge. I would like him to relax, to feel good. <laughs> just to come here and to sit on the terrace in the sun and have a glass of wine, just relax, just feel good for a day or two. Hotel Schoenberg may be the ideal base from which to explore the beautiful Rhine Valley. You can go on a wine tasting tour, visit other castles, or simply enjoy a leisurely cruise down one of the world's greatest rivers. On the other hand, you may never want to leave the exclusive pleasures of the Hotel Schoenberg, number six on our countdown. Now we're heading to the Emerald Isle, Ireland, a place where the landscape has a mythic resonance and history a tangible presence. Located on the magnificent west coast of Ireland, Ashford Castle, our number five pick, stands on 350 acres of beautiful gardens and secluded woodlands. Ashford Castle is one of the finest castle hotels in Ireland. It's a uh, celebrity haven for all sorts of kings and queens and rock stars and politicians. They all end up there. Ashford Castle represents a seamless blend of ancient history and the luxury of a modern hotel. This is really, truly a castle. This isn't Disney World. This is real. The architecture of the castle is a historical tale in itself. Originally, um, it was built as a battlement, a strategic battlement. And actually, as you look from left to right at the castle, from the lakeside, you'll see the history of the castle uh, as you go through the castle, from the 1228 at the very left-hand side of the castle, all the way through to the French chateau style, right in the center of the castle. And the drawing room and the bar area were built in 1905 for the visit of George V, who was then to become King of England. In 1939, it was transformed into a hotel, catering to guests who wanted to fish. Set on the northern shore of scenic Loch Corrib, Ireland's second largest lake, guests are still enjoying the excellent trout fishing. Inside, Ashford Castle is a visual feast for the eyes. The formal public spaces have retained the traditional charm and dignity of a bygone age, with ornately carved furniture, priceless antiques, and pristine period decor. With its Waterford chandeliers, the George V room is the castle's main dining room. Executive chef Stefan Matz has created innovative five and seven course menus using locally sourced ingredients, such as shellfish from the Atlantic and succulent Irish beef. There are 83 elegantly appointed guest rooms and suites. Decorated with sumptuous fabrics and antique furnishings, the rooms offer views of the gardens, La Corrib, or the River Calm. It leaves you speechless. It's just breathtaking. The water's beautiful. The castle's beautiful. I've taken 80,000 pictures, and I could probably spend the rest of my life here with no problem. Ashford Castle is renowned for its extensive range of country sports, 
An equestrian center offers guided rides through the beautiful wooded countryside. Ashford has its own nine-hole par 35 Parkland course. Some of the top golfers in the world have played the Ashford Castle course, including Lee Trevino and Tiger Woods. And if you tire of clay shooting, tennis, and archery, you can take a lesson at the School of Falconry, which offers a rare opportunity to participate in one of the world's oldest sports. How efficient he is, just gliding and belly wing beating. He's so efficient. With its incomparable setting on the Atlantic Ocean, luxurious Ashford Castle has hosted celebrities and movie stars, such as Piers Brosnan, who was married here. It is said that Ireland, once visited, is never forgotten. These are the unforgettable pleasures of Ashford Castle, number five on our list of Europe's most lavish castle hotels. Next on Uber Guide, a romantic escape only minutes by helicopter from downtown Paris, and a Venetian palace with a legendary view. Paris, the city of light. It's one of the world's great centers of art and architecture, culture and style. But where do the wealthy Parisians go when they want to get away from the hustle and bustle? Just an hour from Paris, you'll find a romantic escape from the city. And number four on our list, Chateau d'Esclimont. An elegant castle hotel set on an idyllic 150-acre estate. Built in 1543 by the Archbishop of Tours, Chateau d'Esclimont is a jewel of the Renaissance, with towers and turrets, balconies, spires, and a distinctive checkerboard facade. Set on a moat, it's an ideal place to act out your aristocratic fantasies. I think it's every girl's fantasy to be the princess and stay in such a you know, fairy tower looking place with the moat and, and all of that, and just even you know, envisage yourself back in those times. Chateau d'Esclimont was the home of writer Francois de la Rochefoucauld in the 1600s. You'll discover his personal motto still engraved in the pediment, c'est mon plaisir, it's my pleasure. And pleasure still rules the day. Inside, there are priceless antiques, crystal chandeliers, and marble fireplaces, inviting guests to travel back in time to a simpler age of luxury. We had dinner at the chateau, and um, it, was, it was wonderful. We sat for three wonderful hours and had a wonderful dinner. Each of the decadent hotel rooms is decorated in a different fashion, with luxurious brocades, fine carpets, and elaborate woodwork. The rooms at Chateau d'Esclimont, each one is, is individually decorated, so no two are alike. Very floral in decor, uh, very, if a, if a castle or a palace can be described as feminine, um, that's what your room is like. It's easy to imagine yourself walking in the footsteps of a king or queen as you look out from your room onto the expanse of lake and gardens. It's a combination of the, the elegance, the history of, of the French nobility, but then also the, the leisure, the enjoyment of, of, of activities. Here, guests can fish, walk trails through the forest, ride horses, or simply relax. For the more energetic, there are tennis courts a short distance from the castle. We came in yesterday, and we have two teenage sons, so we did everything. <laughs> we did, uh, did the bike riding, the rowing, the walking through the trails, and uh, now this morning, tennis. The incredibly romantic Chateau d'Esclimont is the ideal place for a fairy tale castle wedding. One Parisian company specializes in organizing weddings specifically for Japanese couples who maximize the luxurious setting in their wedding photographs and videos. For the VIPs, helicopters are a popular choice of transportation, and the spacious lawn in front of the chateau functions as a convenient helipad with room for six choppers. With its indulgent combination of jet-set transportation and ultra-luxe country hospitality, it's a great place to do business. 
They can appreciate the silence and you can hear the birds. <laughs> so I think a meeting in Paris and a meeting in Chateau de Climaux, it's not the same. You, you keep your stress in Paris, not in Chateau de Climaux. In recent years, the Chateau has had many prestigious guests, including Hollywood celebrities such as Johnny Depp. The Chateau has also hosted meetings for powerful ministers of state from Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. I think it's one of the most beautiful places we've ever traveled in the world and just having the amenities, it's very classy, but it's, it's very comfortable. For its luxurious character and elegant setting, Chateau d'Esclimont enjoys an enviable number four spot on our countdown. For our next castle hotel, we're going to Venice, Italy, one of the most romantic cities in the world. Venice is famous for the charm of its unique lifestyle and its extravagant architecture, deeply influenced by the Oriental and Byzantine taste for splendor. Built on an archipelago of islands, its streets are a matrix of some 150 canals connected by over 400 bridges. It is the largest car-free urban area in Europe. Gondola would be an appropriate way to arrive at our number three pick, the world-famous Hotel Gritty Palace. The Gritty Palace is one of the classic hotels of Europe. It was built back in the 16th century by Andrea Gritty, who was a doge of Venice. And at the time that the um, uh, palace was built, Venice was at the very top of its fortunes uh, from the trade with the East. With a history that goes back to 1525, the Gritty Palace officially opened as a hotel in 1948. Known for its refined atmosphere and impeccable service, it has become a renowned meeting point for international high society. The intimate Longhi Bar is named after a celebrated 18th century Venetian artist and features six of his paintings, in addition to hand-sculpted mirrors and a counter of polychromatic marble. One of the most requested drinks is the balsamic martini, a martini cocktail served in a glass misted with 10-year-old balsamic vinegar. The Gritty's renowned restaurant, Club del Doge, has a superb terrace on the Grand Canal. The restaurant offers dishes which are faithful to the region's gastronomic tradition, utilizing fresh fish from the Adriatic and vegetables from the small gardens of the Veneto. The culinary delights, the location and the accommodation have drawn numerous celebrities to the hotel including repeat visitor Ernest Hemingway. Here we are. We are at the famous Hemingway Suite. It's one of the most requested and famous suites of the hotel. Guests enjoy an incomparable view of the Venetian pageant of life. All of the rooms are beautifully furnished with precious antiques and art. The bed sheets are made of the finest linen, and guests may choose their favorite kind of pillow from the pillow menu. This attention to detail, combined with the Gritty's reputation for personalized service, has drawn a veritable who's who of 20th century culture and politics. The Gritty's always been a place to be seen type of hotel. Celebrities will attract other celebrities. So when you have Ernest Hemingway there, okay, that's gonna attract other writers and other artists to stay there also. And by that, it, it develops its own cachet of, of staying there. Within the guest register, you'll find the names of Charlie Chaplin, Greta Garbo, Elizabeth Taylor, Natalie Wood, Woody Allen and Mia Farrow, Princess Grace of Monaco, and Somerset Mom, who returned time and time again. There's a very nice quote from Somerset Mom, which I'll paraphrase, that um, his idea of, of the perfect pleasure was to sit on the terrace of the Gritty at sunset, and, and all is well. 
With its extravagant features and ideal location on the Grand Canal, the glamorous, gritty Palace Hotel commands the number three position on our list. Stay tuned for our remarkable number two pick as we continue our countdown of Europe's most lavish castle hotels, next on Uber Guide. Limburg is the southernmost province of the Netherlands and home to Holland's oldest city, Maastricht. It's a region filled with historic castles, narrow cobblestone streets, and gently rolling hills. It is here, close to the borders of Belgium and Germany, that we find our number two pick, the extraordinary Chateau St. Gerlach. Chateau St. Gerlach, it's uh, one of the few castle hotels in the Netherlands. Um, it was, it's a brand new hotel. It's, um, been renovated for $26 million and, and brought to life from ruins into one of the Netherlands' finest hotels. Operating as a hotel since 1997, this grand, sprawling chateau includes a castle, an old farmhouse, extensive gardens, and a Baroque church, all surrounded by a wonderfully wild nature reserve. And adding to these delights is a superb restaurant. We have a, a, a restaurant, it's called Restaurant Chateau St. Gerlach, where we serve up to 90 uh, guests, fancy dinners. Uh, we have dinners from four, five, six courses. Our chef de cuisine, Otto Nijenhuis, has been at our property for about two years now. And after 10 months already, uh, we uh, received the Michelin star. Guests dine in lavish surroundings with ornate furniture, Venetian hand-woven fabrics, crystal chandeliers, fine art, and a centuries-old library. It's a French-oriented kitchen. Uh, we use our uh, herbs and spices from the gardens that we have at the estate. Uh, we use the fruit, the apples, the pears that grow at the estate. A mix of everything. The spacious grounds are now an outdoor gallery for modern art. But during a visit by George W. Bush and Condoleezza Rice, these same grounds were home to batteries of Scud anti-aircraft missiles. They had a breakfast meeting at, at the Chateau, and we served their extremely fantastic breakfast uh, during their meeting. They had uh, some uh, scrambled eggs with a little bit of uh, truffle. Fifty-eight luxurious suites are located in the old farmhouse building. Each is different and furnished to a very high standard of comfort, combining historical charm, pastoral views, and all the modern conveniences. I don't like modern hotels at all. I like places that have been lived in, that have a history. I can explore the history of that place and I can place myself into, as it were, the, the sort of skin of the people who used to live here, the founders and, and all the generations afterwards. This place has a soul and that's what I go for when I travel. That, that, that's the attraction for me. Although the history of the chateau dates back to the 12th century, the Baroque church was built in 1720. Saint Gerlach was a knight who became a hermit and lived in a hollow tree. His story is told through the restored frescoes and paintings. We have groups of 250 uh, people for a sit-down dinner in the chateau. And before the main course uh, starts, we invite them into the church and uh, there's a, a nice concert, and people never expect a church this large at our estate, and it's always a good surprise. One wonders what St. Gerlach would think of the Chateau's health spa and ornate Roman-style swimming pool, located in the former family chapel. To work up an appetite for dinner, 
guests explore the trails and meadows of the surrounding Ingendil Wildlife Preserve, comprising some 400 hectares. There, they will surely see the wild horses that have lived here undisturbed for centuries. With its extensive gardens, stylish accommodation, superb cuisine, and one-of-a-kind Baroque chapel, Chateau St. Gerlach has earned a coveted second place spot on our countdown. Coming up, the ultimate in luxury, the finest in cuisine, and a one-of-a-kind setting on the Dordogne River. Find out what it takes to be the number one castle hotel next on Uber Guide. Our final castle hotel is located in southwest France, next to the meandering Dordogne River. People have populated this ancient valley since prehistoric times, and caverns in this area feature Paleolithic cave art that is tens of thousands of years old. Perched above the gentle Dordogne, Chateau de la Traine is our number one pick for most lavish castle hotel. Chateau de la Traine is, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful of the Dordogne castles. It was built for defensive purposes uh, back in the 14th century, but has been completely renovated into one of the nicest luxury hotels in the area. It's the kind of place where Rapunzel would let out her hair from the tower and it would cascade below. The castle is surrounded by 300 acres of parkland with many quiet paths and trails. There are only 16 rooms and suites in the hotel, each with a different character. With its dramatic four-poster bed, the Louis XIII apartment is a bold statement of elegance. The apartment features a breathtaking view over the Dordogne. The room is facing the Dordogne, and it's uh, absolutely magnificent. It's very quiet. Um, there's no traffic uh, or anything like that. Uh, the river is very, very pleasant. Situated at the top of the original 14th century square tower, antique ceiling beams are a distinctive feature of the Cardinal bedroom, which enjoys an exceptional view of the French formal gardens. Inside the circular castle tower, a spectacular bathroom has been created with hand-painted murals and a luxurious jacuzzi tub. On hot summer days, guests enjoy the chateau's lovely outdoor pool with its park-like setting. It's a great place to work up an appetite. Chateau de la Trans Michelin-starred restaurant features the gourmet cuisine of chef Stéphane Anzou and his talented staff. It's, um, of course, a cuisine of the region because we want people coming here to have an idea of uh, what surrounds the castle. So we have a uh, producer for the, for, coming from the region, mainly. This region of France is famous for regional delicacies, such as foie gras and duck. These mouth-watering creations can be enjoyed during lunch on the romantic terrace overlooking the river. Last night, dinner is served on the terrace, and it gives you these spectacular views. It's, it's really magnificent, very peaceful. And very beautiful. In the evening, dinner is taken in the formal Louis XIII dining room, which is a work of art in itself. In its storied history, Chateau de la Traine has received many famous people, from European kings and queens to stars of film and television, like director Ron Howard, who celebrated his wedding anniversary here. Chateau de la Traine is an ideal place to discover the many charms of southwest France and the Dordogne Valley. You can explore the quaint villages or prehistoric caves in the region. You can try your hand at fishing in the river or enjoy a canoe trip down the gentle waters. Or you can simply enjoy the many pleasures of this fairy tale medieval castle. From its luxurious accommodation and numerous amenities, to its extraordinary cuisine and dining opportunities. We want our guests to have a unique experience uh, of uh, what was uh, a castle uh, 
by the past time, and also mainly to, to feel themselves at, at, at home and, and to share our passion. The owner's uncompromising taste, gracious hospitality, and passion for elegance makes every visit a memorable experience. Together, these features make the exquisite Chateau de la Trenne the number one castle hotel on our list. A great castle hotel brings the past to life. It's a place where guests walk in the footsteps of aristocrats and savor a golden age of elegance. These are places where romantic old world fantasies are enhanced with all the comforts of the modern world. These are Uber Guide's most lavish castle hotels.